Hello, I'm Mike Barnes, and I'm Professor of Neurological Rehabilitation at the University of Newcastle. For the last few years, I've been focused on uh, promoting um, cannabis as a medicine. Uh, interestingly, on the 1st of November 2018, uh, the government in the UK changed the misuse of drugs regulations to allow for a consultant on the specialist register uh, to prescribe what are described as cannabis-based medicinal products. These products are actually prescribed for any condition, as long as the doctor has taken into account the evidence for cannabis to be used in that condition, taken into account guidelines that are, have been reproduced, which I'll come to in a moment, and taken into account the best interests of the patient. So at the moment, it's only the doctors and specialists register, although actually general practitioners can also prescribe under the direction of a doctor on the specialist register. Uh, though that's not widely known, it is entirely legal. Cannabis also can be prescribed in any format except for smoking. So that will mean vaping is allowable with dried flour, but most commonly, uh, I would imagine that cannabis oils or cannabis capsules will be the main prescribed format because that enables the doctor to prescribe in a more traditional way, such as so many milligrams uh, per day. So that was a great change, but has actually much changed in this country. And the answer to that is sadly no. I'm dictating this in mid-February 2019, and over the two and a half months uh, since the law changed, not one NHS prescription has actually been written. As far as I know, there's been about six prescriptions written in the private sector, which is also entirely allowable. Most of those are for children with epilepsy and for pain. So what's gone wrong? Well, first of all, uh, understandably, doctors are rather cautious about a drug that has been um, said to be harmful for many, many years. All of a sudden, doctors are finding that actually cannabis can now be prescribed. That takes a little bit of change in mindset uh, to accept that difference. Also, doctors are, again, understandably, rather ignorant about cannabis. They've never been taught it. They never know about the endocannabinoid system. Um, and they don't know what to prescribe, in what format or what dose. And I wouldn't want my doctor to prescribe for me if he or she didn't know what, what they were doing with the product. So that's understandable. We can get around that uh, by training and teaching. And indeed, I've set up a thing called the Academy of Medical Cannabis. Have a look at taomc.org. Um, and that's a free online training program with about 12 uh, modules of about 15 minutes each module. And after that, we issue a certificate. But basically, it's a basic training course to understand the basics of the endocannabinoid system, basics of cannabis medicine, some of the dosage, some of the indications for different conditions, what the evidence is, good or bad, etc. We've also formed the Medical Cannabis Clinicians Society, uh, which is open to any clinician interested in cannabis. And we hope over the next few months that society will uh, enlarge, have more members, and we'll put on a educational program. So although it's not a quick fix, um, it is quite possible for doctors to learn about cannabis in the coming few months. And hopefully during the course of 2019, um, many doctors will feel more comfortable about prescribing. There's also unfortunately been some negative guidelines. The Home Office and the Department of Health asked the Royal College of Physicians and then the British Pediatric Neurology Association to produce guidelines for prescription. Um, the RCP has said that if all else has failed, then cannabis is reasonable for, for prescription for nausea and vomiting, particularly in the context of chemotherapy. Surprisingly, they said that uh, prescription for pain uh, wasn't particularly recommended as they didn't think the evidence was strong enough. I disagree with that, and indeed many of the reviews of the subject uh, from Australia to Ireland to my own review for the APPG on drug policy reform in 2016 have come to the opposite conclusion. And indeed, our own chief medical officer, Dame Sally Davis, also came to the opposite conclusion. So I find the RCP recommendations surprising and unhelpful. In a similar fashion, I'm afraid, the British Pediatric Neurology Association guidelines also reluctantly uh, agree that a particular CBD isolate called Epidiolex can be used uh, for childhood drug-resistant epilepsy. And that's a reasonable course of action, as that drug has now been recognised by the FDA in the United States. Um, as medication for 
particular drug resistant epilepsy syndromes, including Drave and Lemus Gestalt. However, the BPNA have said that full extract cannabis products, particularly those containing THCA, should not be prescribed. And once again, while I entirely accept we need more evidence, uh, we need more trials, I think it's a surprising conclusion that children with very severe resistant epilepsy, who've tried most, if not all, other medications, including Epidiolex, and still it doesn't work, that they should be um, banned, if you like, from receiving a full extract cannabis oil, which we know in many cases has been really efficacious. Take, for example, the case of Alfie Dingley, uh, which, with which I was associated. Alfie had many uh, hundreds of seizures a week, and they've now been stopped completely uh, with the use of two full extract cannabis oils. So we may lack uh, robust evidence at the moment, but in dire circumstances, personally, I think that you know, full extract cannabis oils or capsules should be prescribed. And the BPNA guidelines are, again, not very helpful in that regard. But remember, they're only guidelines, they're not mandatory. So in my view, doctors do need to be cautious. They need to be fully aware of the evidence. They need to be fully aware of the side effects, the interactions, uh, which they can learn about quite simply. And then they should have an open mind to try and prescribe cannabis uh, for various conditions for which there is reasonable evidence, not perfect evidence, not final evidence, but reasonable evidence. And that particularly would include um, some of the epilepsies, pain, uh, anxiety perhaps for using the CBD product, uh, for some gastrointestinal conditions such as Crohn's or ulcerative colitis, there is reasonable evidence. Uh, nausea and vomiting, of course, we've already mentioned in the context particularly of chemotherapy. And there are various other, um, perhaps smaller print, but nevertheless important uh, areas where cannabis can and should be prescribed. I would love to see those patients who are prescribed enrolled in some sort of uh, audit trail so we can understand uh, more about the product as we develop over time. That's certainly really important. We, our knowledge of cannabis is still in the very early days. But with that caveat, I think we're in exciting times and I would certainly encourage more doctors to prescribe cannabis medicine for those patients who may well benefit from it. I certainly very much value your thoughts uh, on this um, difficult and somewhat controversial subject. So thank you very much. And that's all I have to say for now. Bye-bye.